What's up everyone, it's Alicia here. It's good to be back. I was away for a couple of weeks because of personal health issues. And with that, I missed the first major of the year, which is kind of sad, but I'm back. I'm feeling good. And we're playing Discord again. This time the Elite Series is going to Jonesboro Open, uh, which is one of my favorite tournaments of the year. And I have to say Jonesboro didn't disappoint in the first round of the FBO and the MBO side. But we're going to first talk about the FBO side and I'm going to do a separate video about the MBO side. So let's jump into what happened on the first round of Jonesboro Open. The conditions of the first round was perfect. The weather was nice and we could actually see what the FBO side can do. And this is at the moment where we're seeing it now. Haley King and Cat Merch is going to try and replicate what they did on the Champions Cup, which is playing really really well and as you can see double digits on the first round minus 11 for Ellie King and minus 10 for Cat Merch they are just performing really well at the moment and I'm interested to see if Haley King and Cat Merch can keep this up on third is Aria Castruira which I have to say is a relatively unknown name for me but as you can see a relatively good round only one mishap on hole 15, a bogey there, but minus nine. Sitting above a lot of good players, she can be really proud of herself. And let's see if she can keep this up. Like, if she shoots minus nine every round, that's gonna make wonders. So I'm really looking forward to see Aria keeping this up and mixing it up in the top of the FBO side a little. Then we have a usual suspect sitting at Lonely Thor, which is Missy Gannon. Missy showed really well considering she had a double bogey on eight and a bogey on five, but Missy Gannon is a really good player. And this is what what is to be expected from Missy Gannon. She's almost always at the top. This is just another Friday for Missy Gannon. But then we have a quite a big of a drop because we have to remember, unlike the Champions Cup, Jonesboro is three days. You don't want to give too much lead to the players in lead. I don't know if it's, if, if it's said like that, but you don't want to give too many strokes to the lead. And after like seven, even six, like it's, it's doable, but it's going to be really hard for the players behind the top four. But there are really good names behind the top four. For example, Macy Valadias, Ella Hansen, Henna Plumrose, uh, even Kristin Tatar. Kristin had a really good round even though she shot three bogeys, but the final double bogey on hole 18 kind of messed her round because she would sit at minus six and that's only five strokes behind the lead. But now she has a long way to go from minus four, but it's Kristin Tatar. She could, she could just shoot minus 18 in the second round and all of a sudden she's at the top again. But it's interesting to see if Kristin Tatar can actually come from behind and finish at the top. She could do that, but it requires a lot of things to go right. Uh, Katrina Allen uh, was struggling again. Uh, Evelyn Salonen. There's a lot of good players still like way, way behind the lead. So Haley King and Katmers in no way can breathe easily. They just need to perform what like they did on the first round. And if they do that, well, they are going to battle it out for the win. But it's really too early to say because what I heard the day two should be a lot worse when it comes to weather. So it's interesting to see how much that will affect the overall of the card and the positioning of players. How much will it affect the lead of Haley King and Cat Merge and will Christian Tatar and all of those Nordic players be more at home because we have a lot of rain here. So it's interesting to see what the second round brings, but that's why we're here. We're here to see how this plays out and I'm here to tell you my thoughts about the rounds so as always thanks for watching subscribe hit the bell notification button so you get notified when i upload new videos comment down below what is what is your top four predictions of jonesboro open like make a prediction now and let's see who's right at the end thanks for watching see you guys on the next round the clubhouse at ton, uh, 10 under par total is macho cat merch cat satisfied with today's performance well um, I guess. Can you elaborate on, I guess, second place, one stroke behind the lead? I felt like I started it off really slow. I took a bogey on a hole that I threw a left-handed backhand on, which was, you know, I don't regret it, but probably should have thrown a softer up shot. But, um, you know, I could have had a quicker start. Most definitely. Your confidence was definitely there all day, at least from a viewer's perspective. 
fantastic eagle on 14. You. you were stretching out the distance driver like crazy. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Talk about the thought process behind hole eight's lefty backhand. I think it surprised a lot of people. Well, um, I don't know. The wind was coming a little funny. I knew if I threw a sidearm, there was a good chance that it would finish more left than I like. So I picked up my metal flake katana, and I was like, I'm just going to hammer it. And I threw it lip up, so it didn't go very far. But it wasn't too terrible of a shot. I still had a route through the woods, but I just threw my upshot too far, and dinker dude the putt. <laughs> How often do you practice a lefty backhand? Do you feel overall it's a pretty solid shot in your arsenal, or is this kind of like an experimentation in competition? I, you know, I, it does it does good sometimes. It, sometimes it don't. Sometimes she goes, sometimes she doesn't. It's the way of the road. Well, you heated up on the back nine yep. and started to play great golf. Um, do you feel like there's anything you need to improve on tomorrow, like like legitimate like game plan changes besides the lefty backhand? Um, no, man. Tomorrow is going to be a new day. I think the weather is going to be a little dicey, so I'm just going to come out tomorrow and see how it goes. Fantastic. Well, good luck tomorrow, Cat. Thank you. Haley King, Haley 11 under a round. Before we talk about your round, High praise for Silva just now walking off the green. What did you see out of her game, a new new player stateside? I'm so excited for the future of disc golf. We're in good hands. It's, oh, that was an incredible round. I know she had a tough round, but it was so fun to watch. Did she do anything to kind of push you or to get you going? It seemed like just great energy on the card all the way around. Uh, I mean, yeah, she's got some great energy. She's pretty quiet, but once we got to talking, like, she was a little bit more out there and, she throws really far, really smooth. It's like my favorite type of throw to watch. So literally just being able to watch that from hole one to hole 18 was able to keep me going, you know. Well, 11 under, um, what, what a great round. Can you tell us about it a little bit? What was clicking? Uh, I mean, I don't want to say the course is soft, but I, did, I felt like I missed like the first seven holes to shoot 11 down still felt pretty good, but yeah. Yeah, just uh, three pars on the scorecard. I mean, any areas to clean up tomorrow? Yeah. I. I think I took a bogey out there, so I've got to work on that, but I just got to keep capitalize, capitalizing. I've yet to capitalize. So, How are you feeling overall? You seem you know, energetic. You know, you're know, you talking about your health and fitness, and I think it's showing on and off the course. Oh, yeah. I, I feel amazing today. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> nice. All right, that's Haley King off to 11-under start here in Jonesboro.